A very good morning and welcome to the ODPP Cafe. The cafe is brought to you by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution and it shows live on Facebook every Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. We welcome you to the show. As always, we welcome you to like our pages on Facebook, on Twitter and on, and on uh, YouTube. On YouTube, we are the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. And on Twitter, we are at ODPP underscore KE. And of course, on Facebook, at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We welcome you to invite other people to join us, to, 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 uh, to engage with us during the show. And of course, we'll sample some of your comments at the end of the show. As always, we start with the highlights of the courts. And this is just a brief highlight of what went on in the courts this week. last couple of weeks we've talked about transnational and organized crimes which translated to cross-border crimes. So this week we were privileged to be in Arusha for the ninth annual uh, meeting of the East Africa Association of, Pub of Prosecutors, East Africa Association of Prosecutors and that is EAAP. So they were holding their ninth annual general meeting and it took place in Arusha. We were privileged to be there to listen to the proceedings of the, of, the, of the meeting, of the conference, and we had a chance to speak to the DPPs of Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. And these are the, uh, the, the DPP Tanzania is the president of the, of the EAP. Uh, the DPP Uganda is the vice president uh, of, the, of the EAP, and our DPP Kenya is the secretary general of the EAP. I had a few minutes to talk to them uh, while in Arusha. Let's get to hear what they said. Welcome to the ODPP Cafe. My name is Anita Onuko. Today we are in Arusha, Tanzania for the ninth annual, gen annual conference of the East Africa Association of Prosecutors, EAAP. Uh, last week we had a brief overview from uh, one of our prosecutors about what is going on uh, this week in Tanzania, in Arusha. And I believe you got some nice feedback, uh, background on what is uh, happening today. So today uh, for the ODPP Cafe, we are very privileged to have three very important guests on the show, and they are the DPPs from Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Today we want to talk about regional cooperation. 
I think the last two weeks you've talked about transnational and organized crime and a lot of which was touching about how the three, the countries in, in East Africa are working together to combat and curb transnational and organized crime. But today you want to speak about the, 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 the conference and the organization of prosecutors and how it benefits uh, criminal justice system in, Ken, in, in East Africa, sorry. So I'll just start with the, uh, of course, with the first question and maybe to the president. Why is this cooperation important? Yeah, as you have said, there are transnational and organized crimes. You know, criminals are not limited to our borders. You commit a crime in Dar es Salaam, then the impact as seen in Nairobi, yeah. Uganda. Yes. So, in this association, we, we are collaborating, we are uh, agreeing to cooperate, mm -hmm. to make uh, a platform in combating, detecting, and prosecuting the transnational and organized crimes. Yeah, I think you're right. One of the cases that I was reading the other day was about the Uganda bombing, the Kampala bombing, mm -hmm. the one that had both the, the three countries, uh, citizens from the three countries involved. Yes. And it yeah. brought to light a lot about um, uh, transnational and organized crime, especially in East Africa. Yes. But then I think for this conference, you're talking a lot about wildlife. Why is that the case, madam? Legal wildlife trafficking mm -hmm. is uh, one of the offenses that has, uh, has been there for a very long time. It has been there, but uh, like oh, we have not put focus as prosecutors, as investigators, as judicial officers, we have not put focus on it. But it is something that is going on and it is uh, really taking up most of our biodiversity, of course, it affects it, it affects our economy, it also affects our health. Yeah. Because once these animals are poached, then they are eaten by the, by the locals, yeah. then some of them, of course, pass diseases. Yeah. You know, to, to the, so it's a public health as well. Yeah, I know this is just about digressing about, um, about what we're discussing today. But when you talk about it affecting our national economies, how does that happen? Because this show, the people who watch it are people like me and you, common citizens. Yes. And maybe we don't even relate to how wildlife, illegal wildlife trade affects us. Mm -hmm. So how does it affect our economies? When you look at wildlife, wildlife as wildlife, it is, um, it is uh, for the three East African countries. Yes. I'm talking about now Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. Most of our... Uh, it's a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. Most of our money comes from that, mm -hmm. you know. So once it is affected, once you find that it is depleted, then which means it goes straight to affect our economies, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. then the tourists can no longer come because they, 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 there's no wildlife to come and, 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 and water and, and watch. Yes, yes, yes. So that's how it is, the, the relationship okay. that comes with the economies. Yeah. Um, so you've talked about how COVID affected the operations, uh, the whole COVID situation has affected how you operate. How, how has that affected the cooperation within, the, within this uh, East African region? I think for, for, for the last two years, as, as we shared here, each country was grappling with how uh, they, they can deal with the COVID situation uh, in its uh, justice system. Mm -hmm. It has it, it impacted on us negatively. Just as much as it has impacted on individuals' uh, health, mm -hmm. uh, we've had to come up with uh, new systems mm -hmm. and new ways of uh, uh, adapting uh, mm -hmm. to the challenges of the use of COVID. Uh, this has meant that uh, we adapt technology, but we also look at ways of how to make uh, the environment safe for prosecutors to work, uh, discharging the so, COVID has had a negative impact. It is now that we are able to interact um, because we feel it's a bit safer uh, and, and we understand how to save that ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Did cross border crime go up or down during COVID? Were they also afraid of? <laughs> I, I, I think uh, ge generally, yeah. what we've seen is that crimes have, have gone up. Mm. Mm. Uh, in, in Kenya, for example, uh, you know, sexual offenses. Crimes have really gone up during yeah. COVID. Yeah. Mm. Uh, human rights issues also are really shorter. Uh, in, in our country. Yeah. Um, and we have seen a rise actually in, in uh, wildlife crime in Kenya. Uh, for example, in, in Laikipia, we have seen a rise in uh, poaching of rhinos again. Uh, and we attribute this to the COVID. 
because a lot of people did not know what to do and how to adjust mm -hmm. as, as we were working towards that. And I think the criminals found uh, loopholes to do it. They get smarter. Of course, adding on to that, yes. uh, you know, uh, because the crime, they, they, they were locked down mm -hmm. physically. Yes. But uh, online, the criminals are continuing. Yes, they were all and busy. most of the crimes now are committed <laughs> online. Yeah. So they, they were locked down with that technology. So they were yeah. still, so the, the crimes actually, they had enough time. Yeah. Because uh, my brothers were at home. <laughs> <laughs> we are yes, not operating then. Exactly. So has, like, I always like asking this question of when I'm reading about transnational and organized crime, globalization therefore is a threat, both a threat and an opportunity. How do you operate when the world is this flat? How do you, is it that you get better in technology? What happens? Well, well, what, what, what is required is of course what we are doing right now, cooperation. You cannot say that uh, now with globalization that uh, we can close our boundaries and uh, we cannot operate here. What we see is just like the wilderness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The criminals are also just crossing over, crossing over <laughs> without respecting any boundaries. Yes. Yes. Whether you're Tanzanian, Uganda, or Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that we are within proximity of each other, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it requires and it demands that we work. We can't work in, in silos. Mm -hmm. So do regional associations enhance accountability in the criminal justice system? This is to you, sir. Oh, yes, to you. <laughs> I was talking too much. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it, it does. Yeah. Uh, because then you are you're required... Uh, uh, I think we have standards within, within the region, even under the community. Yeah. Uh, and we, we are required to adhere to that. If you look at uh, our constitutions, we have managed to make them similar. Uh, the office of the DPP is independent. And that was not, not the case before. Mm. If you look at Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, which are the original uh, members of this community, mm. we have tried to make sure that uh, our justice systems are, are similar and have certain standards uh, across them. Mm. And that's why it allows, in us, it allows us to, to be able to work together. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I mean to add on that, yeah. being the association, we have our constitution which is governing these associations. Mm -hmm. So we must make sure that we are there to the requirement of our constitution also. That mm -hmm. also enhances accountability. Accountability, yes, yes. Yeah. exactly. But so then the other question is, with the expansion that you're looking for, you're looking for right now, is it going to, when, when an, organi an organization becomes so big, then now accountability becomes an issue? Is that something you're looking at as a threat, or is expanding just an opportunity? I think it is more of an opportunity, I would say. Yeah. You know, because um, in the business that we are doing, business of justice, yes. I think you'd want as many people as you want. <laughs> you know, you, you want globally yes. for us to be connected yeah. in order for us to really make meaning, you know, and deliver justice. So for me, I think it is more of an opportunity for members to come in. As long as us members come in, mm -hmm. we remain focused because we don't want so many members to come in and then we get derailed. Mm -hmm. I think if we are, the, 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 the original five are really rooted and then the other members who come in, I don't think they would also, they would also want to come and tow the line. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice, actually, at the end of it all, that we have the all of Africa. You oh, know, in one us. organization. It would, be, it would be, for me, that's what I would think. Yeah. Really, it's more of an advantage for us. Okay. We need as many as possible, yeah. you know. To join so that. that. Exactly. Yes. Because, you know, crime, crime is so dynamic now. And crime is committed in one second and it's committed in 10 countries. Mm -hmm. So you can never say that you, you have enough, we don't want so many people. Yeah. You want as many as possible because of the borderless nature of crime now. Are and they the eager use to of join? Yes, are they, they are. Join? You can see their presence here. Yes. Actually, they have not even sent deputies. They have come. We have DPPs coming yes. in to, to, to what? They honor the, 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 the invitation by the president. Wow, so that means really they're eager to join. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then to add on that, we are bordering these countries. For example, Tanzania, we are bordering Malawi, mm -hmm. we are bordering Mozambique, mm -hmm. we are bordering Zambia, Zambia, we are bordering DRC Congo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If we manage to cooperate properly, 
with Kenya mm -hmm. and Uganda. And then we leave the rest of our then neighbors. Yeah, don't work. Yeah, don't work. Don't work. I, I think in, in addition, and I like using this example of the terrorism. Mm. Uh, I've said this before, but for a long time, the theatre was within maybe Somalia and Kenya. Yes. Maybe a little bit in Ethiopia. Yeah. But mostly Somalia and Kenya. But if you see, for example, recent, uh, recently in Dar es Salaam, what happened? Mm -hmm. um, that was a long, long range, but still mm -hmm. uh, related to terrorism. If you mm -hmm. look at Mozambique, mm -hmm. we have a terrorism problem there. Yes. Mm -hmm. There have been cases in the DRC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And basically, that tells you uh, that you cannot live in isolation. Exactly. Is there ever a situation where the, the, their penalties are higher in one country than the other? I mean, what happens in such cases? Or something is outlawed in Kenya and not outlawed in, say, Uganda or Tanzania? What happens? Is there ever a situation like that? Well, then again, if you, if you apply the conflicts, the rule of, uh, the rule of conflicts or laws. Yes. But, uh, as I said before, we, we are all common law. Yeah. So there's very little that you can That's say. Different. Our people yeah. codes are similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, our laws are, are, are probably just the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nine years going, there has been successes, right? What are some of those things you've seen that the last uh, for the last nine years that this association has been present, you have succeeded in doing? I think I'll leave that to my big brother. <laughs> we started with the Ugandan bombing where you... Yes, the Kampala mm. bombing. That yeah. the Kampala bombing. 2010. Yeah. Um. Uh, it was a long process. We managed to work together. Yes. Uh, there is the issue of the gold that we returned to... Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there's been quite a number of uh, extradition and, uh, and other cases that we've mm. worked uh, with Rwanda. Mm. Uh, we've been working, for example, with European human trafficking and also mm. in Tanzania. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've been also undertaking joint uh, training. Narcotics and okay. also training, yes. Okay. Uh, in terms of sharing information and also intelligence mm. between Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, we've been doing joint trainings together uh, mm. in Uganda and Tanzania. Mm. We have some moot court competition also, oh, yeah. which we have to joint. Uh, we've been sharing uh, mm. experiences mm. and good practices together. I think Jamil Mukulu, the Jamil Mukulu case yeah. from Tanzania, yes. I think we, that was a Ugandan <laughs> who had uh, run to Tanzania and, and hid there. And I think we also, Tanzania also helped us with tracing some of the assets yeah. as well. The asset recovery. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it, it has, it has, hit, it has yeah. hit a number of successes. Yeah. It Which keeps us good. going. So keep yes. going. Yes. Yeah. So we've talked about wildlife crimes, we've talked about uh, terrorism. What are some of the most prevalent crimes in this region? I didn't even know human trafficking is one of those things that is an issue in this region. I always imagined it's something that is done elsewhere, not, not here, within our, our East African region. We have some few cases of human trafficking. Yeah. Mostly from Ethiopia and Sudan. Yes. We, we, in, in our prisons, we have a number of, of illegal migrants who have been uh, arrested while they are hidden some of the. At least I'm supposed to live like family. It's East Africa. You can just cross over and leave. But you have to, to abide with the, the, with the, the available procedures. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. we have a number of, 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 of uh, human, human trafficking cases. Also. Yeah. But human trafficking, you know, at the end of it, they end up being exploited. Yeah. Uh, they end up being used for uh, sex sexual exploitation mm. and uh, labor, which is sex slavery. And we have to step in because if uh, you are following the law, of course you can migrate and you can come, but you follow the law, mm -hmm. you don't go exploiting people and uh, committing crime. But I, I think experience has shown it that actually we have more of domestic uh, trafficking in persons. It's more common mm -hmm. because normally we think about just persons being trafficked across borders, yes. but there's trafficking within 
within the country yeah. and is more common, mm. really. And um, so Uganda, we, we even had to put in the office of the DPP a department of tracking in persons and you cannot imagine the number of cases that we get. And it's mostly uh, females who are the target and mostly young girls. And, it, and most of the time it is for sexual exploitation mm. and labor, you see. Mm. Because yeah. you might even be there having That's a maid now, in yeah. your home who is a 15 year old and From you don't Uganda. know. <laughs> yeah. They are loved <laughs> because they are, I know. they are humble. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm. Okay, so just to wind up, what is the future of this association, of this EAAP? What is the future? What does the future look like? I mean, what are you seeing for the future? I, I think for me, I see a very bright future. Because when you see uh, other countries wanting to join, which means they see something in it. And they have also realized that uh, with the crimes that are now being committed, you can't go alone. You can't work in a silos. The crimes are being committed and the, the criminals are using technology and the, it is borderless. Mm. So you need each other. You cannot, uh, if a criminal runs to Mozambique and I don't have any kind of relationship with Mozambique, that's the end of it. And yes. who benefits at the end of the day? It is a criminal. So I think more and more we are realizing that uh, we can do it together. It's multi sector. It's, it has to be everybody united to do it. And we have to remove these borders. We have to remove all the bureaucracies uh, along the way in order for us to, to get to, to, the, to the very bottom and, and say we are putting some kind of impact on uh, corruption. We are putting impact on wildlife, illegal wildlife trafficking. We are putting some kind of uh, impact on human trafficking. So it, it has just taken us that we, are go we, are, we cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. So I see a very bright future for, for, for us because now be, 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 after four days of being here, I'm sure we're going to be like over 10 countries, <laughs> yes, you know, and we might have to change the name. <laughs> oh, <from> the <laughs> oh, I know, yes, we as, as time goes, we are, we are going to <laughs> right. rebrand, yes. Yeah. So I see a very bright future for us. Oh, that's really good. Yes. Well, I, I think I want to come to the end of this. It was meant to be brief, so that you just give us an overview of the EAP. And maybe next time now we'll call you again to speak about other things that you've mentioned. That's a whole new topic of human trafficking. Yes. yes, and the laws that come with it. Yes. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I thank welcome you. you again to the cafe next time. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. So you've heard for yourselves. The, the discussion today just brings together what we've been talking about, cross-border crimes, and the need for countries to work together because no one, is going to, no one country is going to succeed in isolation. No one can work or act in a, in a silo. As crime, as crime uh, evolves, so does the, the work of prosecutors in the region, so does the criminal justice system. So as such, we had other members, other member states that, want to, that, that, are, that are planning to join the EAP, actually that joined the EAP on the 9th general meeting. So I had a chat with them. I had a chat with Zambia and Malawi about the expectations of EAP as new members as well. And of course, because they come from the South, we just want to hear about what they expect from the EAP as well. Have a listen to this. So yeah, the show is all about uh, informing people, uh, the public generally, about how the criminal justice system works. But today we're just going to discuss about the association okay. that you are recently, uh, you've recently joined, the EAAP. So maybe I'll just start with you. Please tell us, why was this important for you? Um, it's, um, it, it was very important mm -hmm. uh, because um, we are living in an interconnected world mm -hmm. where one country cannot sort out uh, legal problems on its own, be it uh, investigative or prosecution. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's need for countries to come together uh, as countries on a bilateral basis or through um, uh, bodies like the EAAP, mm -hmm. where we can exchange ideas um, and best practices on how we can deal with uh, our home problems mm -hmm. as well as the regional problems mm -hmm. that we are facing in the criminal justice system. Okay. So this is this is an, an East African association, but you're from the South. How important is this for you? Uh, thank you. As, mm -hmm. as I echo what my colleague from Zambia said, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we are living in a global world. You know, we are dealing with criminals. 
criminals are able to plan and uh, engage each other. And even if we are already in a cross border, now, why should we prosecutors or players in the criminal system not collaborate? <laughs> that's know, true, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It. So it was very important for us, you know, as Malawi in the Sadiq region, but also engage our neighbors. Now, we have Tanzania already. Yes. Which is yes. It is in the uh, East Africa uh, region. Exactly. Yes. But their actions, they also affect our actions, right? Yes, yes. So definitely. it was very important for us again to engage the association oh. and work together. Mm. Uh, I'll say that. Oh, okay. So, what do you think are the challenges that the EAP will solve for, for Zambia? Um, uh, mostly, uh, we face the challenge of um, exchanging information. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are not per se in the east, but just like Malawi, we, we border um, uh, uh, Tanzania, which is uh, in the east. Yeah. And um, uh, for your own information, I think uh, for Zambia, um, for most of the exports, uh, imports and exports, we use uh, Tanzania. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so um, there, there's a lot of uh, connectivity between uh, Zambia uh tanzania uh, ultimately even uh, places like kenya yes uh, i know burundi uh, burundi and rwanda i think uh one of the lakes we have in zambia mm -hmm. share. touches those countries we oh, share okay. that as well okay. Okay. so uh there are times when we 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 have cases which uh, transcend the border yes yeah so um our being part of the association will not only connect us to Tanzania, but also to the rest the of uh, East Africa. Ah, okay. Uh, we, we call ourselves a landlocked country, uh -huh. but I think it's apt to uh, change that to land connected. Land country. connected, yes. <laughs> the language must change. Yes. Yes. So um, Zambia is used as a transit point mm -hmm. uh, for most of uh, transnational crimes, mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, when we talk of um, uh, trafficking in persons, for example, uh, it, it's been uh, found as one of the transit countries. Oh. Recently, we've been having a lot of um, um, people coming from uh, as far as Ethiopia and Eritrea, passing through Zambia on the way to South Africa. Oh, yeah. So uh, our being part of um, the East African Association of Prosecutors will go a long way in helping us uh, find uh, ways in which we can deal with uh, those transnational mm. crimes. Ah, okay. Yes. So you've told us what the what you intend to gain from the from the association, but then what do we what does this region gain from 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 being members with you in the same team? Sure. Yeah. Mm, just as I stated in my opening remarks. Yeah. Um, The association and the, and its members, mm -hmm. the current members, they stand together as well. Mm -hmm. I know there there are things uh, they may not they may not have uh, dealt with, which we may have. Yeah. Yes. Um, during the conference, um, uh, I made a presentation on uh, on uh, asset forfeiture. Yeah. Some of the members in the in the the association don't have that, mm -hmm. but uh, I feel I think ours is. Uh, I think it's it's advanced now. Mm -hmm. I think we are doing a lot of work in that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we can um, share some of the knowledge and experiences that we have in certain areas that may be of benefit to the association. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the other new members is uh, the Dera, the Dera Congo. Mm -hmm. uh, with with uh, the country we share a border with, uh, actually a very large yeah. land border with, uh, with mm -hmm. the DRC. Mm -hmm. And we've been having a, a lot of challenges, uh, especially dealing with um, uh, not only wildlife, but also endemic species mm -hmm. like wood. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think it's it's a mutual benefit belonging mm. uh, to the association, both yeah. for the association and its members, yeah. and to us as new members as mm. well. That's really good. Corruption is what is fueling all this. Are you, is it also the cast of your region, like it is in our region? And how do you deal with it now? Uh, corruption? Yes. Uh, indeed, it is a big problem. And uh, I can't say that I think uh, corruption is better in the country. <laughs> is it more prevalent in your area than ours? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think 
looking at the effects of corruption, mm. one would say corruption is corruption, and uh, whatever it is, it has devastating you know, effect on the economy, drop of the economy. Mm -hmm. of, uh, drop of it. So I would say, I think just like Tanzania, now it's also really big mm. corruption everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, be it the private or, or the public. Yeah. Sure. It's called the curse of our generation. Again, COVID happened. Has it affected how you operate? It has. Mm -hmm. uh, it has. Uh, first of all, we are not living in a in a situation where there are so many restrictions. Currently, globally, one of them is uh, travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. Now, the criminals don't care about that. They're busy. You know, this, this is now the time. <laughs> this is now the time yeah. that I uh, know. Look, the state is now, it's like sleeping. The state mm -hmm. is sleeping, mm. you know, observing COVID measures. Mm -hmm. We will not sleep. We will not mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. we'll go hard with them. Mm -hmm. So indeed, the pandemic has affected the operations, and uh, especially combating corruption. Yes. Uh, I'll say that. Mm. That's okay. So as we wind up, this was a very brief uh, chat. Uh, what is the one thing you've learned from this conference that you, you that made you see that we operate differently? What is that different, the differentiator? How different are we from you on the South? We have uh, similar laws. Mm -hmm. At least we, are, we, we, we use common law. Yeah. And like uh, our colleagues from uh, Francophone countries where they, they have mm. civil law. Mm -hmm. But despite that difference, they've uh, managed to work together yeah. as a team. Yeah. Um, from, um, uh, like my colleague has stated, uh, when it comes to mutual legal assistance, uh, which is very important mm -hmm. in fighting tra uh, transnational crimes, mm -hmm. they are very flexible and uh, adaptable. Okay. Yes. So oh. I think that's something we can learn for us from uh, from from the south okay yes uh, even the the issue of um, not really following the diplomatic channels mm -hmm. but uh, also adopting the use of informal channels mm -hmm. of communication yeah. to speed up the processes they have that as well yes yeah. so yeah. that 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 would really really go a long mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. because uh, bureaucracy uh, really delays uh, the happening of things mm -hmm. Imagine you are following uh, a suspect who has uh, gone Close into another over. country yeah. and then you have to wait for your embassy to communicate with other embassy. <laughs> yeah, that's slow. Uh, by the time you get there, the person would have gone. Yes. But if we use uh, informal channels as well, in addition to diplomatic channels, to it would go a long, long way in addressing the problems that we are facing. All right. Okay, thank you so much for coming to our show. Like I said, it's going to be brief, but we'll definitely bring the cafe to your to your countries so that we learn some more. Yeah, well, you yeah. should, you yeah. should. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So you've heard from the DPPs, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania about the need for enhanced for, for regional cooperation. You've also heard from the new entrants, Zambia and Malawi, about the expectations as new entrants into the association. Now, this uh, ninth general meeting had a theme, wildlife as a transnational and organized crime. Wildlife trade, illegal wildlife trade, has become a concern in the region. And, and like we mentioned earlier, no one country can work in isolation. That said, there has been need for a multi-sectoral approach in, in, in combating wildlife, illegal wildlife trade. And for that reason, we spoke to a few partners about what this means and what it also, how it also affects our region and our country's uh, economies. So please have a listen to, uh, to the partners and what they had to say. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Please introduce yourselves. Let's start with the lady. Um, I'm Sharmini Jayanathan. I'm a barrister and the Global Prosecution Advisor for the UN Office of Drugs and Crime. Oh, Karibu to the show. Asante. Please introduce yourself. My name is Kato Wambua. I am uh, the Wildlife, Direc Wildlife Justice Director for Space for Jobs. Wildlife Justice Director. That's such yeah. a big title. No, no, no. So you, you give not. justice to, <laughs> to wildlife, provide yes. justice to wildlife. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think, like I was telling you earlier, before the before this conference, I didn't know that wildlife was such a big deal. Like it is a theme for this conference. So I just want to understand what exactly do you bring on board as partners of EA? So the UN um, Office of Drugs and Crime has supported this conference alongside other partners like Space for Giants. It's an important opportunity for prosecutors in the region, um, in East Africa, to get together um, to discuss some of the emerging crimes, to discuss solutions to the challenges that they face in tackling some of these crimes, um, and to come together to resolve um, um, on new ways in which they can work together. These are crimes that cross international borders. 
um, and accordingly it needs uh, shared responsibility and cooperation between states, between institutions to bring these criminals to justice. Okay, good. Space for giants. Justice for wildlife. What do you do? <laughs> um, we are an international uh, wildlife conservation uh, NGO operating across Africa mm -hmm. uh, in a number of countries, um, many of which are members of the EAP. And what we do is to try and support um, wildlife um, authorities, prosecution authorities, uh, judicial authorities in each of these countries to ensure that uh, they use the law um, to properly respond to the threat of wildlife uh, crime, which is really um, can have existential um, um, limits in terms of uh, our biodiversity. Mm. Is that legal for wildlife trade? Can it be legal? Yes. Yes. Wildlife? Yes, yes. Absolutely. How is that? Um, we we um, have a legal wildlife trade. Animals are moved across, for example, to zoos is probably the easiest example. Oh, okay. right? That's a legal um, example, or an example of legal wildlife trade. Illegal wildlife trade is, as we've heard so much in the press, the killing of elephants for ivory, for of rhinos for their horn, of pangolins, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, the exotic bird um, trade, exotic animals for pets. Um, it's unregulated, it's illegal, and is often conducted at great detriment to the environment. Um, and it involves all sorts of criminality, from corruption, bribes being paid at ports and borders, violence, and we've seen a lot of poachers um, uh, killing our armed rangers or our unarmed rangers who are there to protect our conservation areas, our wildlife. Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. So, um, Carter, just to bring it home, what's the real impact of illegal wildlife trade in East Africa? Or maybe even before you answer that, how does it affect me as a citizen? Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, wildlife um, constitutes a very huge percentage of our, I would say, national resources. Mm. Um, if you take the East African community states, six of them, who are members, all of whom are members of the EAP, um, their GDP, the, the contribution of wildlife to GDPs of these countries is around 20, almost or so percent. Um, around 10% uh, on average for jobs, um, direct jobs, not counting even you know the multi for other jobs which rely on this, those other jobs. Um, most importantly, um, the environment itself is necessary. It's a it's part of the capital that a country has. If you are thinking about, for example, as a business person. And this is like the initial capital that you need to have for you to start, you know, operating, having profit. Um, so without it, you don't have, for example, if we don't have, wildlife includes actually uh, even forests. Oh. So if you don't have trees, for example, you don't have rainfall, mm -hmm. you don't have agriculture, mm -hmm. you then don't have taxes, you don't have oh, a yes. government. Oh, yeah. You don't have security, <laughs> That's you don't have food. <laughs> um, so wildlife and um, in its very broad sense, you know, fisheries, um, um, forestry, um, the, the typical what people think is wildlife, the elephants and yes, the lions, yes, yes. all of that contributes to, to our economic well-being, our health even. For example, um, you have zoonotic diseases. Mm. Right now, you are in the midst of a pandemic. Yes. Um, you know, its its origin is debatable. Part of which it's has debatable. been that mm -hmm. um, it could have been uh, of a zoonotic origin. Now, you have seen Ebola, for example. That's yeah. another one. Yeah. Um, so, also how humans interact with wildlife has a very direct link to public health. Mm -hmm. We have had uh, all these months of uh, lockdowns <laughs> yes. um, and all that. So it's, it's, it's really, and as um, our great Nobel laureate Wangari Madai says, um, if you don't really take care of the environment, um, the environment will um, take care of you. We'll make take you <laughs> feel it. You'll pay for it. Luck. Yeah. So what is it? Why are we not getting it as, as, as citizens? Why, are we still, why is it still quite uh, prevalent? Can you stop the demand for this? 
Well, the, the demand comes from all different sorts of places. Um, in terms of the what we typically consider to be wildlife trade, ivory, rhino, yeah. pangolins, we're talking about Far Eastern demand primarily um, for those products, for the use in traditional medicines, mm -hmm. and also artifacts. I mean, if you've ever seen some of the ivory that's been carved, it's incredible workmanship, it has to be said, but these are highly prized artifacts. And I think there's been a lot of work that's gone on in, in the Far East with organizations like Wild Aid, for example, to, to uh, sensitize and educate the public and thereby reduce demand for some of these products because people won't ideally demand these products if they know what's actually at the other end of yeah. obtaining those products. Um, but there's other aspects to, to wildlife crime. As Kate mentioned with forestry, you know, there's a huge demand for forestry products, for our furniture, for our homes and so on. Um, and so there are um, measures that are put in place, for example, for companies to um, identify the origin or the source and those obligations to do that sort of homework, do their homework on where they're obtaining these products. But that's not necessarily in the face of the public. Mm. And then closer to home, there's obviously bushmeat, um, which is the, there's a demand for bushmeat. It might be part of a community's traditional sort of diet or something they're, they're just used to. So changing that mindset is also a huge challenge. Um, but we know, as, as Kato has just mentioned, with this COVID pandemic, um, even though the source is debatable, we do know that stressed animals, um, um, and, and when we are getting closer and closer to cohabiting with animals, the opportunity for these diseases to jump mm -hmm. from them to yeah. us goes up. Yeah. yeah, you spoke about the origin, I mean, um, following the origin of this. Do we have an, a Kimberley equivalent, Kimberley process equivalent for for this sort of uh, trade, wildlife trade and... Sorry, uh? The Kimberley process, the one, that, the one for diamonds, the way you right. can, yeah. Um, it sort of operates in terms of the timber trade, mm -hmm. um, and we have um, uh, the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species, CITES, mm -hmm. um, which provides a permit system that's supposed to be in place. But of course, criminals are going to flout the they law. The They're going to flout the law, and it's going to be all or nothing. Yeah. And so those processes work for those who want to be compliant. Mm -hmm. um, and for company, these products are actually being sold also illegally. The people who are selling these in shops and so mm. on in the Far East, for example, they know that they're not supposed to do it. Mm. So those measures sometimes yeah, don't have the impact that yeah. we would desire. All right. If, 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 I, if I may just yeah. add, I mean, um, the real reason for the demand is really profit. Mm. All right. Simple as that. Um, it's a, almost a low risk um, yeah. area in terms of enforcement is less. Uh, you have almost zero investments to do. Mm -hmm. You can imagine you don't have to plant any trees, for yeah. example, <laughs> or to grow any animals if you're, a, let's say, a farmer yeah. for cows or anything like yeah. that. You just go and hunt and pass it off as uh, regular beef. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's, it's actually the fourth most lucrative illegal business you can do in this planet. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's really what is pushing uh, the demand. And, you know, we have a very finite um, environmental resource. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at, um, that's why I say, you, know, you are looking at existential levels mm -hmm. uh, to our environment and our resources if we keep this up. Yeah. So when you look at the communities who are the first line of defense, for all this, how do you work with them? Are they really, are you working together? Is it successful? Um, part of what we do as Space for Giants and indeed many other conservation uh, uh, organizations who are our partners here, for example, Traffic, mm -hmm. uh, AWF, um, they have programs, number one, for community incentives to, uh, there are communities which are living with wildlife. Mm. Um, so some of the things we do is to, for example, mitigate on human wildlife conflict uh, by building um, appropriate uh, fences that can keep wildlife and humans separate, um, keep wildlife corridors open, uh, because as you know, we have very, the highest population growth rate in Africa, mm -hmm. in the world right now. Um, so the, the, oh, the human population, mm -hmm. you mean? Yes. So um, with that, you know, we are about to be, by 2100, we would have more than doubled our mm -hmm. population as Africans. Yeah. Um, so that means a lot of what you consider wild free spaces will be occupied by human beings. 
more and more human wildlife conflict is there. Um, we have densely populated countries, for example, in Uganda, where you have we are building um, electric fences around national parks um, so that we can uh, ensure that those who are farmers, they are able to, for example, harvest their, their, their food. Um, we also help communities with other projects, um, for example, um, incentives around um, uh, water. Yeah. Um, there are things to do with um, also um, information sharing with yeah. the communities because part of the communities actually, communities are part of, um, in Africa, part of the model of um, uh, wildlife management. So there are there are wildlife uh, landscapes which are managed by communities themselves. For example, when in Kenya, you have um, uh, what are called um, um, national reserves. National reserves are actually uh, supposed to be held in trust yeah. by counties, yes. county governments. Yeah. Um, and the communities in those areas organize themselves in branches and groups and um, manage that wildlife resource. So we help them in that. We're also working on uh, bringing in fresh conservation investments that target um, helping such groups to really take over more and more of this management of our resources. Because if our people are in the management of the resources, they're benefiting from yeah. it, then you're likely to have them more incentivized to protect wildlife and the environment. Good, good, good. As you wind up, there's always a link to corruption. Yes. Yeah. All this transnational and organized crime. It all boils down to corruption because, for say, for us Kenyans, our understanding of corruption is the 50 shillings you give to the policeman or you know the small bribes. Yes. But this also has a link to corruption. Yes. This is a wind up of this discussion. How do you link this cross border crime to, to corruption? Well, one couldn't really do without the other. Um, corruption is both the fuel and it's also the product of these types of crimes. Um, co it, corruption facilitates the movement of these items through our ports and borders, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it gets these items onto aeroplanes, it gets them off the aeroplanes, off the ships, um, and it, it enables customs officers to turn a blind eye, for example. Those are small examples of how the corruption works in the trade or the trafficking of both wildlife, drugs, counterfeit medicines, and humans, um, another huge problem as well in terms of transnational organized crime. So tackling organized crime um, like this involves um, our prosecutors having to also tackle the issue of corruption. So it's all very much part and parcel. Um, and, and for that reason, it is a significant challenge. But it is something that, you know, for example, at this conference, these prosecutors are here today to talk about how they can bring those two issues together and submit you know, strong prosecutions, prosecution-led investigations in order to get these cases home to conviction. Because whilst we often see reports of seizures, um, huge seizures that are broadcast in the media, we see photographs of, you know, whatever, pangolin scales or whatever, those seizures really only represent a disruption to this trade. They don't represent an end unless you can get it home to a conviction, a strong sentence, and most importantly, that you follow the money and take the profits from those criminals yeah. away from them. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of things have come up. Follow the money, and you can't discuss all of them right yes. now. So I need to just uh, come to an end of this. So are you seeing any future in this? Is there hope for us? Are we able to stop this or curb this with these such such partnerships? Um, I think already, you know, oftentimes we are very pessimistic. But I think, Often. um, yes, <laughs> yeah. when you look at uh, where we were, for example, in this region in East Africa, uh, around 2011 uh, to 2014, we were having the highest poultry prices um, at the time. Um, and we, for example, Tanzania, where we are today, lost 60% of their elephants yes. in a matter of three years. Yes. And it's one of the biggest population uh, of elephants anywhere in Africa or mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So losing 60%, it's more than actually the elephants in Uganda, for example. <laughs> um, so that was then. Where we have reached is we have because of the partnerships between government, yeah. between UNODC yeah. uh, and NGOs such as Space for Giants and others who are our partners in this conference, we've been able to deliver um, a support that has gone to improving investigations, setting up um, case progression units for investigations, uh, setting up um, wildlife crime prosecution divisions, uh, training them, capacitating them, uh, 
developing prosecution tools like the rapid reference guide that we have worked with uh, UNODC on. It is uh, being used in almost every country that is now in this conference. Um, and a good example is in Kenya, where the impact has been uh, a drop in poaching by 80% oh, nice. and a rise in convictions uh, from 22% mm. uh, back in 2011 to around now 90 something percent oh, good. which yeah. is i think a very tremendous um, achievement and the demonstration of what such a partnership can do mm -hmm. and especially with the kinds of uh, directors of public prosecutions yes. and prosecutor mm -hmm. generals we have who are very committed uh, to ensure that um, wildlife is protected and the environment is protected so we as partners we are very happy to work with the eap and the national prosecuting authorities to really continue this and ensure that uh, you cannot have success only in one country because also these animals have no bon uh, yeah, boundaries. Yeah, yeah. So what you consider to be an elephant in Kenya, where poaching has dropped, yeah. is, so it's still cross is, over. is still crossing to Uganda. Yeah. Um, where there is, you know, also some bit of more work to do. So. Okay, I have to wind up. I wish you could talk some more. Thank but thank you. you so much for your time. I'll definitely invite you again so that you can speak some more about transnational and organized crime. It's very interesting thank for you. me and I think for the audience. Thank, thank you, you so for much. Having thank us. you very much. All right, thank you. You've heard from the conversations you've had. The conversation was quite wider actually because we had discussions on corruption as a transnational and organized crime. We had discussions on uh, follow the money approach, asset recovery in the region, and a lot of uh, conversations about collaboration that was really that is really needed in, in, in the criminal justice system. So what we had today was just a tip of the iceberg. It was more about the theme that was the wildlife, uh, the wildlife uh, crime, wildlife, illegal wildlife trade as a crime. The conversation is still going on. You're welcome to engage with us on our social pages. There are experts on standby to, of course, respond to you. You can ask a question. Uh, we are one, I think, because, the, because of globalization and, of course, the East African community, we are one. So feel free to ask any question from, for any of the, of the participants you, you had today. We'll definitely get you a response. Otherwise, we wish you a nice weekend and a nice week ahead. Stay tuned for our next topic next week. And, of course, let's keep engaging and understanding how the criminal justice system works. Thank you so much and God bless.